This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, so uh, in this DevOps process, three teams, you just remember that. So what are the teams we are saying about it? Development, testing team, and operation teams. Yeah, before understanding this, like um, uh, what are the challenges that we have this in the release process between all the teams, uh, let's talk it about it. Each team will take it and we'll try to understand uh, the roles of that, the member. So in the, uh, the entire project, what are the developer objectives? What are the testing team objectives? What are the operation team's objectives? Uh, so, but all the members, if you just observe, they are working for the single project, but each team uh, who are working this in the same project are having the different objectives, right? Yeah, but what about those objectives? Let's look at about it one by one team and yeah, the developer's point of view. So what the developer scope? It's yes, like uh, he's uh, looking about it. What are the functionality which is uh, required for that application to implement it? So like suppose if you just uh, actually were understanding uh, RaisinStandTechnologies.com. Yeah, something login module is required or some course uh, publishing is required or like some kind of uh, users management is required. It's yes, these functionalities. So the developer, whenever he is starting about that implementing that application, he is going to look at about that. Okay, the client, uh, what is uh, the module? That module related functionality, the functionality implementation is going to consider on that using that technology, technology like Java or uh, if it's a Java, Java developers, if it's a .NET, .NET developers. So understanding that functionality and what are the design documents which is given by the architect teams, that is the high level designing, low level class designing. So we have like a different uh, kind of that. So understanding this designing document and converting into that programming, right? Programming and uh, that program when we export it, it has to give that functionality. Yeah, so this is scope of the developer. Yes, implementing the feature or enhancements, whatever it is uh, planned in that sprint, so they are going to concern on that feature. But the point what we have to say is, so whenever he is implementing that, only that feature or enhancement is not enough. So what are the additional things that we have to say is, the integration of that code with other developers is also important. Yes, if I'm, if I'm the developer, if I'm implementing uh, some, uh, some functionality, uh, but end of the day is, so what are the functionality I have implemented that functionality are the some module that is specific to that entire project, right? Right is a group of uh, a set of modules. So we, maybe I'm working this one module, but end of the day, my module is required to integrate with the, the project where we have this other developers code also. So that is the challenge to me is integration of the code with other developers is one of the important activity or regular activity, daily activity. And the next another activity, what we have this is perform the build activities also. Like, uh, suppose uh, if you understand this, the build exact technology, <laughs> uh, if you are uh, installing this any application in our Windows, we will be having about .exe files, right? So we'll download that mostly like a .exe files, Windows specification. But if you just observe that .exe is like kind of a binary file, inst installation file. But you are ensuring this dot x is nothing but some software has been implemented, right? I suppose uh, you are downloading some, uh, let's assume the tarball itself, or like a GIF, GIF software. The GIF software has been implemented using some programming language. And once the program has been implemented, they have packed it as a dot x file and the dot x file, which you can download it and you can use it on Windows system. So the source code, once it is implemented, the source code, uh, they didn't release the source code. So to the customer, like who are downloading this uh, GIF software, they didn't give the source code of the GIF, uh, the GIF software. What they have given? They have packed it, they have converted the complete source code into that. So some package model that is .exe or .bin files, we have like a .jar files. So there's some kind of the binary file, which we can export on that particular platform. Suppose if it is uh, suppose a mobile based application, Android. Now we have like file extension like APK file uh, format. Or if it is iOS, different file formats. Or if it is a Windows .exe file, if it is a Linux based uh, the software that is packing model is .bin file. So on the base of, uh, I mean, once there's a software, uh, the product application has been implemented, application code they are not going to release to this, the vendors that will be converted into binary file. 
binary file is uh, even that like a user he cannot understand it what it is implemented in that yeah, so we call that process what is the process is source code converting into binary file we'll call it as build activity so here the point what you have to say is developer whatever the code he is implementing and he has to perform the build activity that means converting the code into uh, the package for mesh and then uh, he has to deploy into that uh, development servers so he has to test it right so if, if i'm the developer if i'm implementing some functionality i need to convert into binary file i need to deploy to the server and i need to test it suppose if i'm implementing the gif software uh, whenever i'm implementing i need to uh, install on my windows i need to test it before confirming that right the same thing uh, the developer what are the functionality he's implementing not just concentrating on his functionality he has to look at about it every day at this point of integrating his code without giving any impact to that other developer so that is one of the important activity and uh, uh, he has to test uh, first from his site like whether whatever the functionality he is implementing it is working or not he has to test it that means he should have his own uh, testing environment uh, but to test it he has to perform the, the first uh, converting this into build format uh, that is archive files and then deploying that uh, files to the uh, uh, development environment what of the environment which is having that and running this all the test cases from his side we call it as unit test cases so these are all the activities additional activities we are expecting not just concentrating on his feature or enhancement so what are the additional things he is going to do this is integration of the code with other developers build activities uh, deploying that that artifact to the servers then running his test cases so these are all are the additional things which are expecting not just like concentrating on his feature or enhancement but this is not one time activity this is uh, uh, the continuous activity so integration of the codes are performed the build build activities are deploying that and running his test cases whatever it is uh, implemented so they're all regular activities right they're all continuous activities so which we can say that we just observe that they're all the continuous integration activities so main is a feature or enhancement but to uh, release this feature so developer he is having that indirectly all these additional activities also and as well as one more important point what we have to say is developer whatever the system he is using this during implementation and that system is not same as the production system this is one more point which we need to understand it why uh, the releases are having the impact so the developer like he uses that as a development tools point of view he uses that's the windows based on uh, the platforms but security point of view like a portion environment security so all these uh, i mean the load point of view on demand point of view scalability point of view whenever we talked about it what are the functionality he has implemented this functionality is a small component in the live environment because that is the application is abstracted with so many layers like security layers so that is uh, like whatever he is testing on his system is a different compared with that what exactly uh, the environment where we are going to give it to the end user that environment is different yeah, so because of uh, this infra related the changes that is the windows systems the code finally they are going to run it on the secure environment where we have this uh, uh, like i mean more firewalls which are <coughs> more firewalls which have been enabled <coughs> sorry and as well as load balancers which have been defined so with all these uh, uh the uh environment it has to exclude the code yeah this is another challenge <clears throat> but the developers point of view just observe that their main scope is just the functionality whatever they are implementing they don't worry about it in which infra they are it is going to run it that application so they concert okay the two weeks it is a plan that the particular activity is nothing but they do that the main concentrating on that uh, only that's functionality how do we uh, implement it is it working or not so only in that circumstances they are going to look at about it but they don't worry about it uh, the i mean other environments so this scope is limited only to the development environment Yes, so there are some points that we have this developer point of view so main conclude if we just conclude that developer scope 
Yes, he's going to concentrate on his uh, feature or enhancement, which is a plant in that sprint. But whenever the sprint is planned and what are the functionalities assigned to him, but he is not going to work it on only on the functional implementation, but he's having this other dependencies also like integration of the his code and uh, offer integration. Uh, his code should not give that any impact to the other functionalities, other developers functionality or other the uh, I mean, uh, uh, yes, additional functionality which we have this. So it should not give that impact to that uh, the code of the other developers. And as well as he has to perform that build activities and uh, uh, deploying activities to his server which is planned and as well as uh, he has to make sure that what are the test cases which he is having that it has to be passed yeah so there are some additional dependencies that we have and one more important point we have this is whatever the system he is going to use it the system completely different uh, compared with us uh, live environment yeah there are some points on the developer's point of view uh, why we are trying to understand all these points is yes these limitations uh whatever we have this between the teams these limitations so whenever we talked about the release process so are having this uh, some impact uh, some new issues identifying that on the base of that influence or on the base of uh, uh, the scope point of view uh, there's some challenges so these are all making that uh, some uh, problems or some issues during the release process and these problems if it's a small issue then it can be immediately fixed it if it is uh, some infra related issues where it is not able to identify immediately then that is leading that uh, impacting on the delivery dates if it is impacted on it is definitely that is impacted on that the budget of the project yeah so this uh, the team's scope is also are the very uh, important to understand it why we have this uh, the impact on that delivery dates yeah so because the developer they have the scope only development environment and he's concentrating on his main functionality uh, he's not worrying about it uh, the uh, i mean uh, the, the infrastructure whatever uh, it is having this for the production production systems are the different windows and developer systems are the different that is a, one of the major problems they're all leading to that infra related issues yeah so that's about developers point of view and second uh, uh, there's a teams another important team operation teams yes what is this operation team's role <clears throat> yes, this team's objective is so what are the application uh, which is given by the development team the application they need to plan it uh, in higher build environment right Yes, like uh, uh, the functionality of the application which you are launching this uh, to that end user, end users point of view, don't know that. So one lakh users, or one million users, or thousand users, we don't know that. How many number of users are going to access that application? But application, the capacity point of view, suppose if the one lakh users are going to access that application for one hour, yes, it has to handle that, uh, that application that is uh, uh, like, I mean, uh, without having this any failures, yes, it should serve that the one lakh users yeah so the operation uh, team's point of view if we just up to that they're going to main considering on that uh, production endowments so high ability how do you configure it or how do you handle that the load of the application or how do you handle that the failures if something failure is happened that could be uh, storage point of view that could be service point of view that could be database point of view that could be like a systems point of view if some failure is happened how do you handle that and uh, we have the scaling features like on demand features point of view yes uh, so you know like e-commerce application we don't know that uh, in which context like uh, how many number of users are going to access so if you have those like uh, some discounts yes, more uh, the customers i mean if that discounts or offers are extra i mean uh, it is uh, <clears throat> you know the more customers are preferring then more load on the system if you have less customers yes the less load so we don't know that at what time uh, what is the be uh, what is the load on the system but it has to handle that uh, always the scaling features that the on-demand features yeah, so these are all main agenda of this, the operation teams so that means whatever the application which we are going to uh, deploy it to the uh, the production so they need to look at about it so all these features but not only that 
uh, what are the releases which we are uh, keep on receiving that suppose developer he says that his code is ready it's nothing but who will go for this taking that the code and releasing to the next environment is so which team is coming to the pit yeah please hello Yes, which team is coming to the picture is releasing that uh, that code taking from the development and uh, releasing to this uh, next staging environment is operation teams uh, they set up the i mean uh, they take their inputs from the development team and they do that complete release yeah uh, like uh, releasing that change from the development to the uh, staging environment and they will send that mail notification yes the release is successfully uh, released to the staging environment and they will send the mail to that development team and testing team suppose let me draw one diagram over here yeah so if you try to understand it so the developers uh like they have the scope until to the development environment but once the development environment has been completed so what of the the features or enhancement of the functional depth of the application once they have confirmed it uh, which will be released to thus the next environment the next uh, servers like testing servers or we call it as uh, staging or uh, QA environments or uh, yeah the testing environments so what are the environment which is a plant so the code is required to move it from this development to this staging environment but who will release it so who are having this all these staging servers asking about it and uh, what are the feature which we have that the feature deploying to the servers that is uh, we have like a middleware teams or we have like i mean the database teams so the teams are coming into the picture these are all operation teams so that is administrators which you can say that yeah that teams are coming to that releasing that feature to this next environment the staging uh, now operation teams once it is released operation teams they are going to send the mail to that development and as well as testing team yeah, when this environment is ready the testing teams are uh, asking about it at the server and they are going to run that all the test cases which is a planned uh, uh, in that iteration but they are going to do this that iteration is nothing but thinking about that uh, the testing point of view suppose now the feature uh, the number is let's assume that uh, the tenth feature they are uh, that i mean tenth iteration they are having this let's assume that that means the first iteration second iteration like that number of almost nine uh, the feature that they have released it now they are working on the something 10th version 10th version which is a planned is nothing but so the 10th version release should not give that the impact to that the previous features right previous functionality of the application so testing teams point of view if you just observe that uh, they should not run that uh, test cases which belong to that only this feature the feature 10 uh, only that test case they should not run it they should plan for that do we have the, any impact for this, this release which is impacted on uh, feature 1 feature 2 feature 3 so all those test cases also required to run it so this is not just a uh, uh, blindly executing this only that particular feature related the changes or the test cases no maybe uh, we are not sure that this is a release having that impact on that previous functionality suppose if the developer is implementing the settings module maybe the settings module whatever he has implemented it is uh, impacted on uh, some like a front-end functionality so these points are required to consider and the uh, testing team point of view is uh, once uh, uh, the operation team is deployed to the staging environment once it is confirmed testing team they need to run it all the test cases which we have this but if it is the manually they are going to do that uh, they need the more more time right on the basis of the more releases more time that is required for them because they need to run it all the test cases one by one checking 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 and that is a lot of process yeah so once this uh, testing team is uh, tested all these test cases and once it is confirmed then we should be promoted this next uh, like which we can say that 
the next environment which on the base of this, the client, so this environment, the client model's point of view. So let's assume that we have uh, EAT environment, user acceptance testing, or we can call it as the pre prod. So different, I mean, there are different names. So on the base of this, the environment and the client specifications. Okay, once these uh, uh, test cases uh, have been evaluated by the testing team from the staging, and once it is approved, now this change, whatever it is released to the staging, then again, this feature is required to release to this EAT environment. But who will do that, that change moving to this one environment to another environment is operation teams are having this, the permissions. Okay, operation teams, they take that, like what they have done here, they take this, all these inputs and they do the, the configuration on this EAT environment. And once it is configured, they send that notification to that, uh, like a development teams and as well as testing teams. Was yes, the environment is ready. Then which team is coming to the picture is yes, the testing team. I um, mean, this is uh, a client side. The that team, so they are coming up with that. And what are the test cases which are planned? They are going to evaluate it here. If all are okay, all the test cases, then we should be promoted to this next. Uh, uh, that is a production. Production or which we consider as uh, the live environment. So now again, this feature who will release it is so that the operation teams comes into the picture on the base of the approval which is uh, received. So they take this uh, whatever the change they have done here, the same change they move to that to the production. <coughs> and this once it is released, they send this mail notification to this, the teams and they work it on that like testing. And if all the test cases are passed, yes, that is confirm that it is successful so if you just understand about it developer they have the scope over here testing teams they have this uh, the scope over here and client side testing uh, score i mean testing that team scope here and here like live environment point of view managing this with all the scenarios that's operation teams to scope here and as well as in these environments setting up that infra which is required to run that all these test cases so if you just uh, observe this all these points operation teams objectives are the different and testing teams objectives are the different but all the teams are working for the same project with the different objectives yeah so the point like what do you have to say is the challenges now okay now we are understanding uh, the testing team point of view so if you are like a 10th version of this the release which you have is nothing but they need to evaluate all the 10 versions of the test cases not just like only the current version of the test cases and that is a big challenge to them. They need to handle that, all the test cases. And operation team's point of view, what are the challenge? Yes, they'll keep on getting the, the releases. So more sprints are there, yes. Uh, suppose, I mean, uh, <clears throat> the sprint we are saying about it, we don't know that, what is the uh, duration, small durations. Maybe every day we'll be on the releases. Uh, we don't know that like how many releases suppose if you just think about it like uh, amazon uh, the e-commerce application almost 1400 releases on and average they are doing that uh, their features releasing to this to the live environments without giving any impact to the end users who are accessing their application 1400 releases if you just observe that six or seven years back one change if you have this the change to release to the production environment the, a lot of uh, the work they are going to do this like how do we handle this the customers or uh, what is the ch change that's we have the change related like uh, approvals and the documentations uh, and action plans and backup plans so there's so much activities on that but these days so uh, once the feature is a plan how fast do you deliver that that feature to the, the live environment is that the important yeah, so who is uh, having the, the infra? So once the feature is ready here, how fast do you deliver that with all these uh, evaluation and accepting models between all these environments to the, to the end user if you are able to release it with a short duration? So uh, the, the delivery process, if you minimize that, that time, life cycle time, then that project is going to have the, the more the value because in this competitive world like e-commerce application if you just observe that who are giving them the better service definitely uh, uh, that application will be more demand yes like a feature thought it 
and they should uh, plan that how quickly that can be delivered to the end users. So with that objectives, so the small, small features, small, small iterations and keep on getting uh, releasing that. But in this release process, operation teams point of view, if you just think it that the uh, client point of view, that is a value to his project or to his application. But uh, who are working the team's point of view, the developer, they need to keep on working that, understanding the functionality, integration of the code, and then build that and run that to their test cases, deploy it. So they need to work it. That is a continuous, continuous, more stress on them. Not just on that feature. Yes, they need to perform that build activities, integration activities, and testing, uh, running the test evaluation from his side. And once all his test cases are passed, then he's saying that my code is ready. Then, then operation teams. Yes, they need to take this change and move to this uh, releasing to here. Then intimating uh, to the the teams. And then the testing team are uh, running about it all the test cases. And once all the test cases are successful then conforming to this uh, like a uh, management team and on the base of that approval again the cooperation teams coming that and uh, doing the, the change to the next environment yes a lot of a lot of dependencies on the teams if you just think about the, the manual process a lot of dependencies but in this dependency the developer they implement that on their environment but once if you take this change and if you uh, apply to the staging some unknown exceptions, sudden some uh, infra related issues because Windows system, file system, structure, and everything is different uh, compared with the Linux file system. So, application on his developer system, it is working, but whenever we take that application, whenever we apply this on the Linux systems, it is not working. Where is the problem? Is it infra problem or is it coding problem? Who will identify? Who will work it on that? There are some conflicts between the teams. Yes, yeah, so there are all uh, the, some major uh, the challenges and the major uh, the points we have. So older approach point of view, long duration of the projects, no issues with all things because we have this uh, uh, two, three months, four months, or five months, six months long duration of the iterations. Yes, like uh, teams and uh, okay, that is a different story. But these days, what we have to see is the sprints. So the as quickly as possible, uh, deliver that change to the live environment. But how do you manage it? All these activities. Yes, that's points. Yes, if you just think about it, all these points. Uh, yeah, so this operation team's point of view rewarded mainly for uptime and application uh, that releases. So there are some objectives, but how do we coordinate it, collaborate it, and communicate it all the teams? So with the different objectives, that is we are going to play a role. Yes, now the DevOps. So how this DevOps is going to help? Why they are looking about the DevOps in a suddenly in the market? Uh, we have the, the price almost from the last 20 25 years or 30 years of this uh, market we have but suddenly why the demand for this devops in english yes i said is helping about it uh, like uh, to have it thus the better coordination uh, on the requirements point of view but whenever they plan that as well so they have like a short durations point of view the more releases and more stress on the teams and more uh, coordination is required more dependencies on the teams everyday releases point of view handling the customers or these approval models evaluation models so that devops is going to helpful there yeah so the object uh, the principles of the devops if you just observe that yes now what about our objectives now thinking about it if you uh, if you are going to work like as a devops engineer yes these are the three teams point of view uh, we need to plan it or we need to think to us about our roles yes so what are those objectives of this or principles of the devops if you just observe that develop and test in an environment similar to production it's like a development uh, you are doing this or testing or doing this so make sure that those similar to the production environment yeah if you plan it that means what are like infra related issues suppose a production which you are planning this on uh, something sent away system or a hard system uh, the developers, whatever they are doing that, uh, the testing team, whatever they are running about the test cases, if it is able to run that in the same infra, then what are like infra related issues that can be identified in the development itself, right? Then we don't see this like a more in that uh, between the teams, uh, uh, like uh, the fight where we don't see this, the fight between the teams because this is the developer issue or this is the infra related issue. No, so we don't see that. 
if you are able to plan it to the production uh, the line x or whatever that if you give that the parallel uh, one anywhere on it but it should not give that impact on the developer activity as well that is one more point yeah, without giving that any developer in, uh, activities impact if you plan that the similar environment for the developer whenever he is implementing uh, the application if he is able to run his test cases on that uh, the production kind of the, the platform then that helps about it identifying the issues uh, in the development itself without having the sun conflict between the teams yeah so that is one thing as uh, to overcome that infra related issues uh, these are solutions we need to provide it and one more point like which you have to see is uh, as uh, we are saying about it one more challenge so we are getting keep on uh, changes right very frequent we don't know that one day how many releases or weekly wise releases but how do you handle that all these uh, you know the changes which we are receiving that the very frequently that could be infra related or that could be application related here are the two points we need to consider <clears throat> So infra point of view, if you just think about it, infra, you know, like suppose user has to be created or some, some application related package has to be uh, installed, but package has to be installed on 100 systems. We have the 100 systems, but there is a dependency for that application. So that change, if you'd like to apply that where we have this all the 100 systems, how much time you are going to take with that? So if you say this, the boss, I'll write it one script and from one central system, I'll connect it to all the hundred systems and I'll apply the change within the three hours. Or if you say that, okay, I need to have this manually log into the each system uh, where uh, I need to log in it and I need to do the central in the package and verifying that then like that. So each system wise, like I need to have the 10 to 15 minutes or like a hundred systems, then like two or three days, say thinking about it. Where is that? I mean, how, uh, you are managing this so we need to have the solution how quickly uh, you deliver thus the change that could be application related or infra related so how fast you deliver that the change to us number of environments number of servers that is which we need to plan it yeah deploy that application builds or infra related change frequently we need to have the solution so which we can say that there are configuration changes how to manage it so that is a continuous deployment to all the environments in all the servers. This is another principle. And the next object to like uh, evaluation models, we are saying about it, validating and uh, yes, monitoring. <clears throat> yeah, the like uh, evaluation model is, so who will give that like uh, all the test cases, the testing team, we don't implement the test cases, but we need to make sure that in that entire process, if the developer once he says his code is ready uh, like integration point of view uh, build activities point of view running his test cases developers or uh, integration test cases eva evaluation point of view then the testing team uh, test cases evaluation point of view like what are those uh, the process model we are trying to understand it this entire process if you are able to automate it this there are like continuous activities They're not just like one day it is going to complete it right so you are doing that same activity repeatedly instead of doing that the same activity whatever you are doing that every day repeated manually if you are if you plan it or if you come up with this automation solution that helps that uh, the more uh, i mean uh, i mean the better solution right so if you come up with that like automation of course that gives us more advantage because one time you are making that effort to uh, bring that the entire process automation but if you do that one time but that is going to helpful every day to save that a lot of time about that developers uh, the times and as well as testing teams uh, times and infra related changes to apply to that number of environments number of servers so what are the time that is required if you plan it the configuration changes how you can uh, apply that 100 servers or the 200 servers within the less duration of the time with automation think it about it how much time you are going to save it uh, uh, and uh, uh, you are not just going to take this uh, collaborating all the teams manually. That is one more point also. Yeah, the developer code taking and uh, delivering to the uh, to the next staging environment and sending the uh, notification to the testing team, then coming the testing team and executing. Instead of doing that all this manually, suppose if you have this uh, the switch and the bulb, 
the first time we do that, like uh, a recruit, I mean, uh, calling this electrician, and we do the, the fixing of that between the uh, switch and bulb, the wiring, whatever it is required. Once if you plan that, uh, the proper wiring and the model, so every day you can enjoy it, right? Whenever it is required, just to switch on it. Yes, that will be, uh, I mean, uh, the hitch to the, the bulb and where you can have this, uh, uh, the light from that. And once if you don't need that, yes, switch off that. But wiring is first setting up that, yes, that's you need to have the, some kind of, uh, uh, yes, the plan and some time it is required. But if once if you define that, that process automated every day, uh, the switch here, it is the development environment. And like uh, delivering that change to the production environment with all this entire process. So what is the process we are expecting? If you just observe that. Yeah, once developer, he says his code is ready. Yes, deploy to the next environment service and trigger the test cases and evaluate the test cases and check that uh the test case are passed or not if it is passed okay take the change deploy to the next environment servers but here may be the four servers or the 10 servers we don't know so deliver that change to this next number of servers then run that test cases which are planned on this environment then evaluate the test cases and uh, check it all are passed or not if it is passed yes promote this change to the next environment deploy it test it, deploy it, test it, and monitor it, right? If you just observe that, uh, from a once developer, he says, deploy it, test it, and monitor it. So there are other like a continuous activities, continuous activities uh, uh, which we have those in the process. Yeah, so this is uh, like a continuous testing and continuous monitoring activities which we are expecting that. Yes, yeah, so if you just observe that, like, um, uh, I mean, the, having that same infra uh, between the development and production, that is one principle, and how you are planning about it, continuous uh, delivery of the deployments, and how you are planning about the continuous testing, and how you are planning about the continuous monitoring about your, uh, the delivery process or about your application, uh, the complete life cycle events, how you are handling that, that is the solution that we have from the DevOps. So that's why like the DevOps, if you just consider about it, it is not the tool. So almost like uh, wherever uh, you, you see this, the project, in that project, we are expecting that about that Agile process. If there is Agile, yes, how they are going to manage this, this complete, uh, the uh, delivery models or like uh, integration models is monitoring or uh, testing all these models. If you just observe that, what is the solution? That's why the DevOps is the solution. So DevOps is another tool. So DevOps is one kind of the methodology which is helping that to have the, the better coordination, collaboration, communication between the teams. Yeah, <clears throat> so that's the point uh, which we can have it uh, from that like a uh, older approach from that like Agile, uh, why they have come up with that Agile, whenever they plan it, uh, what are the challenges that's we have us in this uh, delivery uh, the deployment models point of view, integration models point of view. So those problems to overcome that, Yes, now the DevOps is kind of the, the process model, uh, whether that is, I mean, so is it going to have the scope to the only Java projects? No, the DevOps is not the specific to the uh, technology. So whether you have the, the product which is running with the mobile based application or whether you have like iOS based application, Android or like a web application or internet based application or internet based application, wherever you see that there's some process which is required uh, to have thus the coordination between the teams, then you can plan for thus about the remotes. Yes, so that is about objectives. So this is helping them to coordinate it. But like, yes, uh, why they are looking at the DevOps engineers, that will come back. But the principles or objectives, if you just observe that, this is the main objective. But how do you do that? All the things that is important. That's we are coming to that. Who should know about it all these, uh, with these objectives? Who should know all these principles? Is? The DevOps thing. We are going to know about it, how to manage it, all the things. Yes, we have the different tools. <clears throat> yeah, how do you do that setup? Similar environment. Yes, we have the solutions, the cloud solutions we have for the cloud. If the vendor is in the cloud infra, then we have the cloud solutions. If the vendor is going to use it on premises, like his own data center, then we have the solutions. Yeah, how do you set up the similar environment? 
and how do we uh, apply or deploy the, the change to the number of systems and number of environments this way how like the solutions uh, that's the point uh, if you just to conclude that what is devops is yes so the devops the name itself is saying that so coordinating the, the developers and the operation teams the developers but testing team is also yes uh, without having the testing there is no like a uh, moving to that the developers testing and operation teams all these teams coordination they are they are looking about that one of the devops engineer who can understand how to coordinate all these teams simple but to coordinate all the things we are going to do that some automation point of view to automate it we are going to write some program some like some tools related scripts so you are writing the script is nothing but you are become like as a developer right yes we are the developer and once the uh, suppose as we are saying about it electrician once it is uh, a recruit i mean well, first time whenever it is required it so we'll uh, recruit him and we'll uh, ask him to set up this the complete wiring okay he has done this the wiring but after doing that so okay if it is the single house that's fine but if it is the large com i mean the company wise uh, if you are having this the so many blocks and in that blocks like uh, so many in the divisions but all the center like electricity to manage it we need to have this like the person who can keep on uh, monitoring and managing about us that's uh, the uh, service right so we are going to do that uh, uh, complete automation of this uh, process so to automate this is we are going to write some scripts that means we are going to become as a developer and once that's uh, the implementation is done we are going to keep on monitoring and managing this the complete life cycle events so during the release process that is operational activities so why they have given the name as the dev ops is so we are going to become as a developer and we are going to perform that operational activities both activities that's why i was just concluding that yesterday yes some coding is required so there's some scripting but not just too much level but here we are going to write the code to many that infrastructure not that like application functionality think about it so the next it career wise if you just think about it um, the infra itself uh, now we are launching with the coding before uh, to launch this all the things like we have the different different teams like uh, system administrator network administrator database administrator middleware administrator yes, so many the teams are working that but with this a cloud and with this a devops model the devops engineer he should know the cloud and he should know about that these are solutions how it can be handled with the development activities but development in the sense which development infrastructure as a code that means how to launch the system to launch the system you are writing as a code or how i can create a user account yes to create a user account or to create a uh that means uh, about like any uh, complete i mean installing the packages or starting a shop in the services we are going to write as a code but that code is not that uh, that difficult not that much difficult but it is very easy <coughs> we have some uh, different language formation uh, like a, <coughs> a human readable understand that easily you can understand like english statements how you are going to uh, understand that the same way if you know that some uh, Uh, the Linux operating system and all the things you can understand the statements easily. Yeah, so this is a point uh, which we have this as DevOps. So what is DevOps? If you just observe the definition, so DevOps is not the tool that is the uh, the development methodology which is going to helpful to have the, the better coordination, communication, collaboration between the developers and as well as the teams who are involved in this in the process. Yes, if you just combine these two, agile and DevOps. So DevOps is helping that. The here, what is the model that we are bringing there with this DevOps is continuous delivery. That is deployed, tested, deployed, tested. Number of environments, number of servers. We don't know that. That is one client. Maybe he is using that three environments. Maybe another client which is just that five environments. It doesn't matter that. But what about that's like um, uh, uh, evaluation models and uh, execution models that we have. So identifying that and uh, defining this deployment <coughs> and run that to test cases. Deploy it, test it, deploy it, test it, and as well as monitoring. So these activities, the continuously uh, which are repeated in that, uh, so helping about it to make it that 
the fast delivery, the fast process models. Yeah, finally, if we just combine this Agile and DevOps, yes, Agile is helping that as a continuous integration point of view, it is uh, giving that the, uh, the point, the continuous integration, that's the developer's point of view. So the prioritize his work, like uh, design it and develop it and uh, build it on his systems and uh, test it and uh, integration is completed or not. Until that, that is continuous integrations. But once continuous integrations have been completed, but that uh, the completed one, how fast you are delivering this, are remaining all the environments deployed and test it and deploy it and test it, that is the DevOps. So continuous integration as a delivery or deployment or testing or monitoring. So these activities that is a combining that Agile and DevOps. But Agile, yes, we are involved in that, but we don't go for this too much on this Agile, but important scope which you have this is DevOps. I got this point or any queries questions uh, before talking that uh, what are the solutions how we have the solutions from this model so we'll try to understand some tools point of view now yeah how got these points yeah just being that yeah. like uh, hello Vinkit. yeah hi yeah yeah hi so i want to ask uh, devops role i understood like it's uh, development and operation teams are coordinating with it departments and project people but what is yes. the agile role yeah agile, agile like, is uh, you are saying a spirit model and all i that understood but uh, in implementing project and real time scenarios we don't see any agile Yeah, I mean, um, so we are involved in the Agile process, but we don't see this like uh, the directly involving this in the Agile uh, process, but that is a different team. So they plan about it, like uh, the sprints and scheduling about it and uh, uh, like uh, review meetings and as well as the scrum meetings and that will be taken care by the different teams. So we don't involve that. Uh, but once a developer, he says, so my code is ready. Uh, then what about the process model that's we have like uh, evaluation models and acceptance models and uh, uh, deployment models so those models uh, with the uh, uh, monitoring so we will take care of that yes we will take care so who will take care of this agile and who will be responsible yeah, for this yeah, the separate, uh, like uh, we have uh, the separate teams. So uh, that's uh, uh, as, well, as well management teams are going to take care of that. That's management level, they'll come up that. So that is not required for us. It's not related to technical aspect. It's the management. Yes, exactly. exactly. Okay. Uh, that is complete planning model planning and uh, like um, so the uh, customers and as well as uh, as well process teams and management teams so they come up with that and on the base of the client requirement uh, which are all the modules and which one is that uh, uh, as a priorities and uh, which duration that's with they can plan it that is everything management level so we uh, don't involve that so that much level that is out of scope for us Yeah, so any other queries, questions, please. Okay, so this understanding about uh, DevOps, uh, Agile and DevOps, how it is going to help us. But with these models, if we just observe that, <clears throat> if we just combine the Agile and DevOps, the continuous integration as a continuous delivery or deployment. Yes, as uh, we are saying about it, the continuous integration yes on the developer mission also uh, on the developers uh, between the developers also we need to have the solution integration so how fastly they can integrate it while integration time so they should not have the problems yes and as well as uh, they need to perform their build activities and uh, they need to evaluate it their integration test cases uh, so that is also one of the important activity right and once that activity is completed uh, integration activity is completed then we bring that into that delivery or the deployment models. But just keep this in mind, uh, the delivery or the deployment, but we'll see this the difference of these uh, keywords, what is the delivery and the deployment, that's the next point. But integration, if you just observe that, 
uh, that is between the developers and whatever that's the functionality which they are saying this that is uh, making ready of that the functionality and uh, whenever they say they're ready we have the, some evaluation from a uh, coding point of view also that is uh, which i'll come back uh, to give that in the continuous integration what are the main activities and the delivery of the deployment i'll come back to that so more deeply into that yeah the finally if you just combine azure and uh, devops so as the sprints which is planned uh that's the prioritize of the, the work the designing build and a test so this is on the uh, developer's point of view when that is done uh, then what are the remaining environments which are this is deployed and run the test cases then move to the next environment deployed run the test cases if something is wrong uh, go back that and where it is that uh, what is the reason of the failure so just identify this and fix that issue then again do the, the same process repeat it so this is the continuous activities so the main five activities just remember that continuous integration continuous delivery continuous deployment continuous monitoring and continuous testing so there are the five uh, important activities that we are expecting this in this uh, as a devops or role point of view but what we have is in the integration delivery deployment this will come back uh, the some more points i'm showing now let's look it about this integration model so what exactly the integration what are the uh, phases that we are expecting in the integration phases that's uh, uh, like i mean yes here also some kind of uh, internal some more phases we have this what are the phases in the integration suppose uh, the developer once uh, uh, he's ready with the code but the code we do i mean he is i mean other uh, developers and their code they are not going to keep that in their local systems right yes we need to have the, some storages some uh, the repositories repositories kind of the storage so we are centralized uh, the storage system so developers once they are ready with their code then they need to go for this uh, like integrating with us or uh, storing that's the complete code in the code repositories yes we use that as a separate code repositories where all the developers the entire project related and in their project what all the developers are working all the developers related code which will be uh, stored in this repository a repository whenever we talk it just a simple think about it that is uh, storage the code is available in the source code repository suppose uh, if i am the developer if i just going and uploading this the code to the repository that is not enough right but what we need to do this yes there's a code uh, whatever the developer he is going to commit that so the code is required to evaluate it so whether that is uh, he is following this all the standards while implementing the coding or not that is also important thing not just blindly taking his code okay for the functionality is working take the functionality and go for the next level no not that so before going to uh, perform in this the build and the test activity whether he is following that all the coding standards or not that is the first thing which we need to evaluate it yeah pushing the code to the source code repository so whenever he push the code to the repository the pipeline starts so pipeline uh, what is the exact pipeline is sequence of the steps yeah first do this step if that is successful promote to the next step if this is uh, successful promote to the next step like sequence of the steps or phases phases also is the best keyword which you can use it sequence of the phases if we define this as a, uh, like as a process the center process we can call it as pipeline yeah so any developers uh, committing the code to the uh, the repositories is nothing but he is accepting his code so he is i mean if he is not ready the code to the repository he has to keep this in his local system once he is ready then he is going to commit to the repository but once he has committed this to the repository is nothing but the pipeline has to start it but pipelines how to manage it who will do that all these uh, like uh, executing all these steps one by one are you going to do that the manually no we are not going to do that we are going to take the some help uh, some tools help so what do, what do we call these tools is continuous integration servers so what are the tools are available i'll talk it later uh, but like the requirements point of if you just observe that developers what are the code they uh, like to store it we need to have that repository source code repository 
So once the source code is updated something here, then we need to uh, start this evaluation. But evaluation, how do you do that? We need to keep on monitoring this repository, right? Who will monitor it? If some uh, activity is performed here is nothing but, yes, we need to make it alert. Okay, some, so that is, uh, which we need to start the pipeline. But who will do that in the pipeline? Yes, the tools we have. The tools like a continuous integration servers are available, which are helping to define the complete pipelines of the process. Okay, this tool keep on monitoring about this repository. If something is happened here, it starts the pipeline. But in the pipeline, what in the first stage we are expecting is so the complete source code has to be compilations, like uh, uh, on the base of the programming language. So it has to be compiled, converting into the binary files. Suppose if I have this Java program, uh, which I have implemented dot Java file, dot Java file, uh, I cannot run it directly. We have some process for that. So first we need to compile it. Otherwise I cannot run it. Yeah, so if you have the phase like a compilation, uh, then code quality evaluations. What is the code quality? Suppose just if you uh, observe this, uh, some kind of the requirement from that, uh, the client's point of view. What are the source code which is implementing by the developer? So for just uh, take this one example. Uh, so any Java file which they are implementing, the Java file number of lines in that file should not cross beyond 200 lines. So that means all the developers who are working for his project and what are the Java files they are implementing, they need to follow the standard. What is the standard? Uh, what are the Java files they are implementing? It should not go, I mean, it should not have this more than 200 lines, simple. But who will do that, that evaluation? Suppose I'm the developer, I'm implementing one functionality, but while implementing the functionality, I have implemented uh, the complete functionality with two not three lines. Two not three lines. But actually client standard, what he's asking is, you need to have the Java file only 200 lines. Okay, uh, if I remove this next uh, three lines, my functionality is not working. I need to have the two not three. Okay, the client, uh, he's not going to review anyway. And if I commit that, if I think it, and if I commit this the code to the repository, but some person has to catch it, right? Yes, like that is, we have the, some tools which are helping code analyzation tools, uh, which we can call it as a static analysis tools. Yes, these tools, what are the code which is available in the repository? It is going to pull it and it is going to evaluate it, scanning. So what are the coding standards which are defined? All the coding standards are following by the developers or not. So uh, whenever we run the scanning, my file which is on the 203, which is go it is going to catch it here. And it is going to send that boss in this file, we have this 203 lines, but we are expecting only 200 lines. Then the developer, he has to change his code. I mean, that is how he is going to work it. That is his story. But the quality of the, the code is required to evaluate it. If you miss that step, then where is the quality of the coding level? Don't think that the only functionality of that application or loading of that application. The quality of this, uh, the code is also important, right? Yes, this is, I mean, this is the one phase which are expecting, like as uh, code analysis, code quality, code vulnerability, security vulnerability from the code. There are uh, some points and the challenges that we have, but how do you do that? Yes, we have the solutions, we'll come back. We are going to look at all these entire process with the practical. And the source code, compilation, if this phase is complete, then if the compilation failures, yes, it is stop it and return back. Plus, these programs are failed. If this is successful, promote to the next stage. What is that next stage? Code quality evaluation. If this phase is successful or not, yes, evaluated over here. Yes, if all the like, uh, uh, suppose here we have a uh, thousand files, all the thousand files it is going to evaluate it. If it is all are working, then it is going to promote to this next level. So what is the next level is? Yes, uh, if it is successful, promoting to the next that is approval. And once this is approved, then I run that all like a uh, test cases which are planned from the developer's point of view. So which we can call it as unit test cases. 
that means before deploying before build before deploying that what are the possible test cases of this application which we can run it all the test cases which will be planned here there are like which you can call it as best keyword is pre-deployment test cases we didn't do the deploy to the server but before deploying to the server so any test cases may i'll talk it more on this whenever we start at each topic but just understand the process so deployment test cases if you have anything yes is required to evaluate all the test cases over here and if these test cases are successful then promote the next stage that is build as we are saying about it source code has to be to files right like uh, uh, suppose a uh, zip software .exe file which are downloaded .exe is the binary file but before creating this binary file all this all the code is good or not quality of this and running the test cases these are all the things which are required to perform it then create a .exe file so the source code in one storage but you are creating the .exe file is nothing but that version related .exe file we need to store it somewhere right yes so uh, we will upload that these artifacts into that some separate repositories yes two types of the repositories if you just observe that one is source code repository where that complete uh, uh, the code of the developers which will be uh, stored and once this code all this evaluation is done and once that is a packed that is artifact but uh, the zip model simple the zip files which will be stored in separate repositories suppose version 10 you are using is nothing but 10 version related code in the source code and a 10 version related release copy in artifact repository yes we need to store it in the artifact repository uh, once it is stored then take this application and apply to the server then once it is deployed and run that integration test cases which are planned yeah if we do that this complete evaluation then we can say that continuous integration is completed so once anyone is uh, committing the code to the repository yes we need to have this the complete process we need to automate it if you automate it then the developer is getting relaxed right so he's content concentrating on his code and once he's ready and he's just pushing the code and uh, this tool is going to evaluate it, all these uh, phases and it is giving the report if the test case are failed yes it is going to give that here if that like a uh, code quality is not good it is going to give that here it is stopping the developer over here or if the unit test cases particular functionality is failed it is stopping the developer over here yes he's not going to worry about it manually how he can perform the build that artifacts and uh, uh, how he can check this the code qualities or how can how he can perform the deployment yes we need to uh, define this complete all these phases which are required for the developer the developer is going to concentrate on his functionality then he's not worrying about it at this entire process if he is going to do any mistake also we are catching that yes this is the continuous integration model if you just uh, high level if you just observe that developers one he pushes to the source code repository uh, the code which will be uh, pulled it and which is starts by this build server and which performs about uh, code evaluation uh, creating their artifacts running this unit test cases there's a continuous integration server this integration server once the artifacts are ready artifacts which will be stored in that artifact repository and once this artifact is ready artifacts which will be taken and it applied to the servers so if we define this process until that thus we can say integration but integration is not enough once this uh, until that integration is done but if you are okay to release this feature to the, the production then we need to plan it delivery or deployment model also but what is the delivery or the deployment model yes what is the delivery or the deployment model for the next one yes so if you just observe that's delivery of the deployment so once uh, uh, as we are saying about it developers committing to the version controlling tools and we are saying this continuous integration service this continuous integration service keep on monitoring about this version controlling tool which perform that running this build artifacts and unit test cases and once that is done it should be deployed to that uh, staging service and 
uh, in the staging server all the test cases which will be evaluated. If all the test cases are passed, then promote it to the next environment that is a non functional environment or the uh, load testing environment, deploy to here and run that all the test cases. And if this is successful, next to promote to that UAT environment and run that UAT related all the test cases. And if this is successful, then promote to that the production environment and evaluate all the test cases and confirm to the end user, uh, okay, I mean, to the vendor, yes, the delivery is successfully done. Yes, this is the process model which we are expecting as a continuous uh, integration of uh, the delivery or deployment models. But still we have this, uh, uh, the point like uh, what is the difference between the delivery and the deployment? Yeah, so CI and CD will call it uh, the DevOps. You are talking is nothing but important uh, keyword which we need to remember continuous integration and continuous delivery or deployments but in this continuous integration what we're expecting is build it run the same test cases deploy to the stage and run all the test cases if it is successful then it is completed integration but integration if you are expecting to release to the production but we have like two approaches suppose uh, once this uat environment all the test cases are available uh, suppose okay that's uh, yeah uat is uh, completed but to promote to the production, some of the projects, what are the limitation we have is, we should not go for this automatically deploying that, that change to the production environment. So that's what is meaning is, some manual intervention is required. We should not go for this everything automation, in the release process, manual intervention in the sense, suppose uh, before releasing that feature to, this, uh, to the production, uh, to that end user, marketing team they are coming to the picture they are going to evaluate the change so they need to check it that what are the feature which is releasing to the customer that feature everything is okay or not they need to do the manual so if you have that kind of uh, approval models in the release process then you should not go blindly deploying to the production and confirming that right you should stop it here and once there's a marketing team or a testing team, the uh, manual evaluation is done. And once we got that approval, then we need to manually promote it to the production environment. But you can ask this was uh, if you are going to do like this, this is not like as uh, complete automation. Yes, some of the projects we have the limitations. We cannot go ahead directly everything as automation. So on the base of the test cases, uh, which is uh, implemented by the testing team dependencies, our uh, marketing teams the dependencies approvals point of view or client approvals point of view yes so some of the projects are having that uh, like verifying this the before promoting to the production some manual effort so i mean almost like 70 to 80 percent is done this automation but like a uh, required some kind of that effort from the manual also yes that is manually verifying and then promoting that if you define uh, for about our project this kind of the process we call that one as a continuous delivery but like we have some e-commerce based application is yes, uh, what are the change which is ready is yes, uh, automatically promoted to this uh, person also in the complete uh, delivery process i mean the deployment process so with automation approach where you don't have any manual intervention in the process so if the testing team they come up like this handling all their test cases so the test cases evaluation is important right if they are able to automate all the test cases of this application of functionality, non-functionality, everything as automation script, then we are good. Like we can go for this complete automation. But some mission critical application like uh, telecom domains or some kind of uh, the dependency domain base, we cannot go ahead like all the things as uh, complete uh, automation, but we have some limitation manual. Then uh, we plan that for that application as a continuous deliveries. Yeah, the continuous integration continuous delivery and the continuous deployment deployment is complete automation and deliveries uh, are promoting this the manually to the production and integration is until to that staging environment if you are able to complete that about your test cases evaluation and if you stop the process as we say that integration is completed but in these uh, phases is uh, uh, like as we are saying that the pipeline pipeline contain the sequence of the stages and the steps the stages and the steps are going to change it on the base of the client 
but the main points like what we need to have is code evaluations unit test cases evaluation that means pre-deployment deployment post-deployment post test cases then are remaining all the environments deploy it and test it deploy to test it yes these are all activities which are which are expecting now uh, as uh, the main models point up from the devops to the continuous integration delivery or deployments <coughs> Yeah, so finally, so let's, uh, if you just uh, come back to that, any queries on this? Uh, so, how about the sponge? The difference between the integration, delivery, the deployment, monitoring and testing anyway, that is a straightforward, but like uh, having this understanding of these points, that's required. Fine. Uh, so, Vankar Kesha here. So yeah, as you yeah, said, like uh, uh, for CI, CD, or I mean for deployment or delivery, we're gonna yes. use uh, as you give an example. Gen Jenkins is one tool which used yes. in all three cases. Yeah, yes, it can be used. Okay, okay. Yeah, I will. I will give the demonstration with uh, Jenkins. Uh, we we will see the I mean whatever I'm talking about it, we will see this uh, practically. The continuous integration, how do you define it uh, with the coding approaches and with, uh, I mean, we have like different approaches, with the GUI based approaches and coding approaches. Uh, we'll see this with all the practicals. Okay. And one more question. Like uh, once the code is out, I mean, the developer released the code and uh, the pipeline, enter pipeline goes and then it delivers yes. as a GIF file, right? So that uh, it's gonna deploy and then it's gonna validate the unit test cases, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, and how about when we deploy onto the servers? Uh, I mean, when when we deploy directly onto the servers, like okay. uh, Apache, or, and yeah. that post uh, that also the test cases yes. will be ran. Okay. Yeah, yes, I mean, obviously, once that is deployed to the server, so the server URL, once it is ready, we have like uh, some uh, testing tools like Selenium, which is helping about it. You can connect to the server and suppose uh, manually we do that login, right? Login username and password. Yes. So yes. those kind of, yeah, so those kind of test cases also, we have like a Selenium script, uh, which is the develop, I mean, the testing team, they implement it which is helping about it connecting the server and executing that like a uh, login uh, credentials evaluations or whatever that whatever the functional of the application each and every button or the tab or the radio buttons everything it can be evaluated with the testing scripts okay but this is not this is completely different right with the unit test cases it's more on the code yeah, uh, evaluation yes. okay. You, okay. unit test cases unit test cases are the different and as well as the post deployment test cases are the different so uh, okay. whenever uh, whenever we are involved in the process, so before uh, deployment, that means without having the server dependency, uh, what are the test cases uh, that we can evaluate it or we can execute it? All the test mm. cases that will be planned uh, as a pre-deployment test cases. Okay. That means uh, we don't have those any server dependency. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. So this kind of the yeah, those kind of the test cases will call it as unit test cases. Uh, but that who will implement it is that is the development team itself. They will implement it. Suppose uh, if I'm the developer, if I'm writing some calculator functionality, some add operation. Uh, so add operation, uh, I can test it myself. I don't have those any server dependence. So I can write it on a small function where I can pass that uh, a comma b values and how it is giving the response. I can check it. So suppose if I pass it one comma two, is it giving us a three or not? If I pass it like minus one minus two, how it is responding? If I give them zero zero, how it is responding? These are all my cases where I can test it my functionality without having the server dependency. So all those test cases I can plan it as a pre-deployment test cases. Okay, so good. So uh, now, <clears throat> yeah, okay, sure. Uh, it's fine, fine, Mankar. Thank you. Yeah, good. Okay, and now uh, the next, like, uh, we go for the sunshine in some more points. Okay, now uh, we understand the complete C and the CD, it's like, uh, importance of the DevOps. If you are planning this one project, the project related uh, code evaluation, how do you do that? Build activities, how do you do that? 
and as well as uh, <clears throat> the deployment, which servers they are going to use it, or the post deployment scripts to run it. Yes, what are the test cases? And what is the testing tool that is required to use it? So there are uh, the tools point that will come back uh, as a requirement. But before that, uh, as we are saying about it, DevOps engineers. But what about this uh, Dev and what about the operations? Yes, which kind of the like a development activities we are going to perform and which kind of like operation teams or uh, operation activities we are going to perform if you just understand those points like there are the six activities overall we need to remember that as a role of the devops point of view uh, to handle that all these uh, five activities that's a continuous uh, integration delivery deployment or uh, monitoring or testing so all these activities to perform it as a developer devops engineer so one of the main development activities we are going to perform is <clears throat> so we need to write uh, the code uh, as the infrastructure automation point of view that means like uh, the next i mean now we have the, the cloud infrastructures right cloud environments it's like our uh, data centers yes we have the data center data centers we have like different teams for working that but in, uh, what they're expecting this is from the devops in air they are not going to look at about the separate operations engineers who can work it on uh, launching the system so are configuring the, the networks and those point of view that <clears throat> but yeah the some extent level uh, they need to have those uh, operations the separate operations engineers networking level and all the points devops in need from that point of view they are looking about it who can write the code to set up the virtual machines, storages, networks, and like that, which is required for the uh, application to launch it. So thus we have like I mean um, the cloud point of view some solutions <clears throat> where we can write as a code to launch the machines, or to defend the storages, or to attach to the networks which are required for about our virtual machines. All these things we can write as a code. So important point is infrastructure as a code. Yes, we should know uh, how do we launch that virtual machine using the code. Our storage is how we can define it. Our networks how we can define. That means if you're going to perform these activities, what is the prerequisite? You should have the, some idea on that, like uh, uh, some Linux commands point of storages, networks, and as well as the, uh, the Linux commands and virtual machine, what is the virtualization, and how do we share it to the resources between uh, a hypervisor machine to this like virtual machines there are some concepts that is required so that is one point is yes, we are going to write or we are going to learn the code to launch the virtual machines and storages networks and configuration management is yes, once the systems are ready suppose you have launched one uh, the database server or middleware server but then you uh, you have launched the virtual machine is nothing but virtual machine is not enough uh, we need to set up the users we need to enable the security policies or we need to uh, set up the time zones which are required on that node and we need to set up those like uh, packages or the services users so all these like configuration and the platform we need to make it ready suppose if the java application java ha software has to be installed a server has to be set up on the system so this is a one i'll talk to us in the next class more on this uh, what is that infra? What is that like a platform? What is the service? That is a cloud. I am going to talk it in the next on Monday. I will see this more on this topic. <clears throat> but today, if you just understand it, once virtual machine is ready, I need to have the platform that is Java platform or the Python application of the Python platform. If it is a .NET, .NET platform, that's required. But how to manage it? This complete configuration. Uh, that's to handle that. That means creating users or setting up the, the packages or permissions which are required, or file distributions or a platform that is Java, Python, PHP, or databases. Also, you need to write as a code. So, launching the virtual machine, and after that, on that virtual machine, whatever that the platform or configuration that is required for a code or application to run it, there's a platform management. Also, we can write as a code. We have the configuration management tools. And once this uh, uh, infra and a platform is ready, but you need to deploy application, right? Application who is giving that? Developers. Just we understand. Okay, developers, when he says his code ready, we need to take it and we need to do this deployment in all the target nodes. Yeah, that is, how do we distribute that change to that number of servers, number of environments? That is also like a, 
application changes, how do we uh, distribute it as quickly as possible to this, uh, where we have this number of virtual machines and uh, the platforms which are specific to that, that's application changes. So these activities to perform it, we are going to lend it some coding. But don't think this too much on coding. They are like the simple, or uh, like as English statements with some kind of the conditions. But don't think like, okay, I need to learn the Java, or I need to learn that some kind of the program. No, don't think that too much. But if you have the programming, that is definitely added advantage. But if you don't know that uh, the programming, and if you are looking about it, IT career, uh, the freshly, it's definitely uh, you need to spend some time on that, uh, learning about it, some kind of. Uh, yeah, the programming uh, tactics and logics analyzation that is also required. Yes, we are seeing that a dev ops in here, but a dev section, if we just talked about it, which kind of the development activities we are going to perform is infrastructure to launch it, configurations to manage it, application related changes to easily to distribute it once the code is ready. So yes, that pipelines to implement it, we are going to write as a code. So we are saying this, we are saying this as a developer. Yeah, that's point. But once this all have been launched and everything is ready, but we need to do operational activities. So this continuous activities, logs management. That is a if you have some issues, yes, we need to do the some troubleshooting. How do you do that? Like a number of hundreds of the service will behind that. How to manage it? All the things. Yes, log management and performance management here yeah, the system performance is very very important application launching is not enough how fastly the customers are accessing that are able to access it that is also another important performance of their application monitoring activities just keep on uh, alert notifications event notification confirming that if something is happened in our infra how you are going to get that notifications and before uh, uh, getting the, the impact on this infra how you are able to get these notifications and how you are able to monitor it about your systems. Yes, these points are also like some continuous monitoring tools and I mean centralized logging systems. That's also which we need to have that understanding about this point. That's why they call you as a DevOps engineer. Why they are going to call you as a DevOps engineer is nothing but we are going to perform. Uh, to complete making the, the pipeline, pipeline all the stages and the steps to automate it. Yes, so that could be infra level, configuration level, at the deployment level. We are going to write some coding uh, involvement, but we have a solution. So, I mean, there's a different tools. And once that it has been set up, that yes, we are going to perform that, managing this about our infrastructure as well as. Yes, so there are the three operations uh, which we should know on those five principles to apply that on the DevOps. That is continuous uh, integration, continuous delivery, deployment, monitoring, and testing. Yes, but what are the tools that we have? Now, finally, talking about the solutions. Now we understand so far, <clears throat> the principles we understand as the DevOps in it, what you need to do, that's we are understand the roles of that. But what is the next, uh, how you're going to do all these activities? Yes, the DevOps is the process, that's not the tool. But this entire process, all these principles uh, to handle by this DevOps engineer. So we have those different tools. One of the tools, let's conclude that here. Yes, we are saying about it, a developer, they need to show that the complete code in the source code repository. That's point of view, code management. But one of the different tools that are available is we have like SV and CVS, Gate, Mercurial, there are the different tools that are available in the market. But we are going to talk it especially Git, GitHub. Uh, <coughs> there are the tools, so there is uh, as source code management tools we are going to look at. But are you going to look at about the developer point of view or like as administrator point of view this tool? Yes, we need to know that as administrator and as well as we are the developers and whatever the code you are implementing, we need to store this or we need to keep that in the source code repository. That is the Git we are learning that as a developer's point of view and as well as the administrator point of view. Yes, that is required as something like a, a five or six classes only to that the source code repository. Yeah, this is one tool. The gate build tools. So we are understanding uh, once that's uh, the code is available in the GitHub, we need to start the pipeline. Perform that like uh, compilations and uh, uh, yeah, the converting the uh, complete source code into binary files, the packaging models. But how are you going to do that? Are you going to do manually? 
No, we have the tools which are helping uh, for all the tools are available, especially tools point of view and Maven Gradle. So there are some tools which are available in the market which are supporting for the Java, like that. If the .NET based application, .NET related the build tool we need to find it. If it is Android based application, that Android based application related tool we need to find it. Yes, we have this on the base of the technology, technology related the build tool we need to identify and we need to use it that build tool uh, to perform the compilations and to converting thus the complete source code into binary files. That is .exe file I need to create it. How I can create it? Yes, we need to look at about it some DLL approaches which are helping that. Uh, some like an ant which are helping this so not exe file and jipping so that build tool which we need to plan it so on the basis of the technology the build tool is going to change it yeah we are going to talk it as uh, the build tool point of that is maven and we need to have the code uh, analysis code uh, coverage uh, to evaluate it yes we are going to use it sonar cube or that one of the the famous tool uh, as a core coverage matrix to analyze it but we have like a uh, different tools also textile coverage or pmd but we are going to talk about the sonar cube uh, how do we analyze the, the core qualities and next point like which have this is artifacts yes like uh, once the source code is ready source code which will be performed i mean com converting into the, the binary file by the build tool and um, uh, once the artifact is ready, artifact we need to store it, the binary files. But where do we store it? Yes, uh, we are going to talk in the separate server. The nexus we are going to talk it here. Or we have like Art Factory, JFrog, different tools are available. So we are going to talk in this nexus over here. So next slide, which you have to see, as we are saying about it, all this entire process is required to perform it. But how do you perform all these activities? Yes, we are going to use some tools for here, like the Jenkins. We have the Team City, Bamboo. Uh, we have like, a, <clears throat> I mean, uh, the different tools in this process, like uh, uh, CA, uh, Circle CA is available, or uh, <clears throat> I mean, Microsoft point of view, like Azure DevOps is available. So, different continuous integration tools are available. Uh, but we are going to concentrate most of that one of that like uh, uh, the demandable tool that is Jenkins. So we are going to look at the complete Jenkins, how to define that CA model and as well as the CE, that is continuous delivery or deployment to models. Yeah, that's point of view. The Jenkins, we are going to talk at that. Next to platform. Yes, we should uh, know about it, at least the Linux. Yes, we are going to look at about the so, uh, the CentOS or uh, Ubuntu both. I mean, we'll see that some commands point of view. And yes, we are going to uh, the first like uh, 10 to 15 days on the Linux. And configuration management tools that's required. Yes, configuration management tool. We are saying about it. Once change is ready, how fastly you deliver the, the change to the number of any environments, number of servers. We don't know like 100 servers, 200 servers, or 50 servers, or 10 servers. But how many number of target servers doesn't matter of it but how you are going to uh, plan to move that change to this number of servers number of environments is some solutions that is required but what are the solutions that we have to say is the configuration management tools are available <clears throat> and we have like ansible chef puppet salt there are the different tools uh, ansible we are going to talk it that uh, the, uh, mostly on that and puppet uh, as optional uh, which we look at about yeah, so there are uh, two tools uh, which we look at about it as a uh, configuration management tools point of view. And as we are saying the deployment point of view, we should know some servers like application uh, servers or the web servers. Yes, we are going to look at the, the Tomcat uh, from the Java application point of view. How do we install it? How do we start it to stop it to set up that, configuring that? Uh, so those points we are going to talk at this from the application source point of view. That is Tomcat and as well as Apache web server also we are going to look at that. Nginx and test automation point of view, like test scripts evaluation point of view, we should know like uh, 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 pre deployment test cases and post deployment test cases. We have like different tools like uh, Selenium, JUnit. So we look at about it, uh, the JUnit and some point on that Selenium as well as. Yeah, so these tools, uh, that's where we are going to look at about it. And finally, scripting is some kind of that automation that is required. <clears throat> 
Uh, yeah, scripting point of view, yes, we look at about it, uh, the shell scripting as essential, which is required. Uh, but uh, like on the base of the time constraint, so as optional point of view, we look at about it, the Python also, if it is possible. Yeah, so these are two points, at least uh, shell, which is required, but Python is optional. Uh, I'll give the solutions how we can go ahead with the Python. Yeah, scripting is required. And then like monitoring tools point of view, yes, one of the monitoring tools which is required, that's an angular we are going to look at. <coughs> Another important thing which we have to say is, uh, which we didn't discuss that point so far, uh, that is uh, containers based applications which are uh, uh, coming into this, the market now. So that's point of view like uh, the Docker uh, and the uh, Kubernetes we are going to talk it from this. The Docker and Kubernetes, almost uh, 10 to 12 classes we are going to discuss. But what is the difference between uh, the normal application and this container based application? Yes, we have the, some differences, those differences are shining and working on this Docker and Kubernetes. We look at about it. And then, yes, the cloud, cloud point of view. Yeah, the, we are going to learn it uh, AWS with the DevOps. Yes, we are looking about it, uh, Amazon, AWS. Uh, but still, we didn't discuss that, so whatever this AWS and AWS features. Uh, the next on Monday, we'll meet it, 8 o'clock, and we look at about it, uh, the completely discussing on what is AWS before jumping into that. Uh, the actual uh, uh, the topics is we'll uh, look at about it, what is the cloud and how it is going to have the importance of the cloud. So some points on the cloud as well as. Yeah, so then uh, uh, tracking tool, so there's a Jira, the bug tracking and virtualization software, like uh, the vagrant <clears throat> or uh, yeah, virtual box. So we are going to look at about it. It's there all the tools that we can say that. All these tools are helping that to having or to, uh, uh, I mean, to make it the uh, principles of the DevOps, like uh, getting the solutions of that, this DevOps. Yeah, so that's about all this, and there are like uh, other common tools, just like diagram representation. Yeah, that's about understanding what is DevOps and why do we, uh, what is the need of that or importance. And as a DevOps engineer, what is the important role that we are going to perform this in the in course? Yeah, how about this agenda? Yeah, if you have any queries, questions, yeah, so like we are going to look at that each and everything as a practically, uh, we'll give that. Uh, uh, whatever uh, it is, so almost uh, each and every section point of view tool we are going to talk at that. But each tool is not just like a basic level, just the installing and running one or two commands, not that. So handling that the complete scenario with that tool, we are going to look at it. Yes, that is uh, one of the possible different scenarios. Suppose Git, if you take it, yes, uh, four or five days, Maven, three or four days. Uh, the sonar cube is yes, uh, one or two classes we are going to spend it and access one class the jenkins almost seven or eight classes we are going to spend it the linux 10 to 15 classes we are going to spend it uh ansible almost uh, four or five classes on this tomcat two classes so the selenium day in it okay that is on the base of the maven tool so which will look at that uh shell scripting is yes, like uh, two or three to uh, uh three or four classes we are going to look at that uh, Nagios two classes, Docker and Kubernetes around 10 to 12 classes, Amazon around 10 to 15 classes, the Jira, uh, Vagrant, yes. So all these tools says that is required uh, as DevOps and if you would like to move into that. Yeah, so that's all from my side for today. Any queries, questions?